welcome this morning. I want to welcome everybody to come out. We've got a lot of visitors today. We just want to welcome each and every one of them. Let's give them a hand this morning. I'm glad to have all of you with us. I love to see people come out to the house of the Lord. And y'all done a good job. Uh, survived, we survived 127 yard sales again. Get to go with them. Wasn't it nice to see the sun shine this morning? Seems like it's rained forever. But it's good to see the sun. I, I know yesterday I seen Clayley and, Le- and Lena. And Clayley looked like a drowned rat out there in the rain. And glad he survived it too. But there we are. And a pastor and his wife, they're, they took a, I guess, a much needed vacation. They're, they're uh, going to be gone for four or five days. But they left in Brother Roger's hands and and Brother Roger, he 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 been capable hands. He always does a good job. He gave you a preaching this morning and tonight, and you'll enjoy him. Well, if everybody stand, we'll get started. Just be, just help sing this morning, and we'll worship the Lord. It is good to see everybody here this morning. Let's help us sing the unclouded day.
out of these old hands because they're all full of good promises. And there's a, there's a fish and you got nothing but good in it. So why don't you take a prayer for us this morning? Do ask for us. One of my grandsons is trying to hire people. Just ask for them here in prayer. And Terry Johnson, she said to tell the church she's some better, but please keep praying for her. She got that COVID. So COVID just raised it bad head back up again. I keep hoping it's past, but just keep popping up. So Terry got COVID. Our trust in him and hold fast and he will he'll lead us through. Any others up here? Yes, yes. Bring her with us in prayer. Lord, we come to you again, Lord, ever thankful. Lord, and we have nothing to look forward to but good. Lord, Lord, you're our Savior and our Lord. Lord, we're just so thankful. Lord, we come to you as of these requests this morning. Lord, you see each and every request, Lord. Lord, we just ask you and your children, for our brothers and sisters, Lord, just step in and be precious need. Oh, Lord, you love us. I know you don't want us to be sick. Lord, we just pray a praise for our grandson. 
We're going to take up the tithe and offer this morning. Paul, would you come and pray the blessing over the offering this morning? Thank you all for your giving this morning. Lord bless each and every one of you. We're going to start our special singing. We're going to ask Sister Diane to come sing for us. Oh uh-huh. 
taking you picture Calvary and that one spotless lamb that suffered and died for my sin his blood ran so deep that it covered my soul and Satan
read a passage of scripture this morning <coughs> from the book of Acts chapter 4 beginning with verse 23 now this is the beginning of of prayer So the Bible says, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Now this is Peter and John. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with, with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, against his Christ, for of a truth against that holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, the people of Israel that were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined for to be done. And now, Lord, behold, threaten and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word, and by stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders be done by the name of the holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Let me go back to the ending of their prayer. And they said, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak the word. And by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. But I have a thought this morning, it would be a shaking. So let's pray. Father God, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just begin to right now, just to move amongst this congregation. That, Lord, we're... Healing is needed. I pray for that you would stretch your forth hand forth and heal. Lord, if there's one here this morning under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you under the free pardon of sin, that God, even right now, you would begin to deal with their hearts, that you would soften their heart, make their hearts as fallow ground. 
And, Lord, I pray that you would just hide me behind the cross and speak the words that you would have us here. Give me that boldness that you speak about. Lord, I ask for that this morning. I ask for a boldness to proclaim your word. Because sometimes it's not easy, Lord, but with your help and with the power of the Holy Ghost and that boldness, we can share what you've laid on our heart. So, God, we ask this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen and amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Peter and John had just had an encounter with the lame man at the temple, and they had, they had told him, he said he had asked for money, and they said, we don't have any money, but silver and gold we don't have. But such as we have in the name of Jesus, they reached out and they said, rise up and walk. And they had, the lame man had began to walk with them in praising God. And they were called before the, the Sadducees, which were kind of the supreme court of the Jews. And the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. And here Peter and John were preaching Jesus Christ, him crucified and risen from the dead. And they, they called them before the council, and they even had them put in jail for the night. And the next morning as they put them on, on trial, they said, talking about the lame man who happened to be standing there with them, and the Sadducees said, how did you do that? And that opened the door for Peter, and he said, let me tell you about my Jesus. Now, I'm paraphrasing this, but he said, let me tell you about this Jesus. And the Sadducees were just kind of blown away because they were highly educated people. And they looked at Peter and John as unlearned and ignorant, as the Bible says. They didn't have the professional training that these Sadducees had, but they had something that I don't believe the Sadducees had. They had Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost, and that made all the difference in the world. And, and they were, they said, the Bible says they marveled at these men, and they looked at them, and they knew that they had been with Jesus. I'm telling you, when we get in the presence of Jesus, it, it changes us. We, we can't help but be changed. There's a different countenance, a different look about us. We act different. We walk different. We talk different. So they had been in the presence of Jesus, and, and, and it was plain to tell. But they told him, they said, now, we're going to let you go, but don't you be speaking anymore about this Jesus that you say is risen from the dead. And they was plain with them. Peter and John was plain. Peter said, whether it be right to obey men or God, we're going to obey God. And that's what we do in a world that we live in. Many times it's not popular to talk about Jesus. But we need to obey God rather than men. It's not politically correct, maybe. But it's biblically correct. So they they began to, they came together, and, and the reading they had, they, when they came back, and I don't know the room where they had been. It may have been the upper room, but th they were with a group of people. And what did they do? What was the first thing they did when they faced some uncertainty about how to proceed? They took it to the Lord in prayer. Many times we go through this life and we face trials and struggles and, and sometimes we don't even know which way to turn. In our Sunday school lesson, things may perplex us. A and it's okay to, to take that to God, to be open and transparent with God. Say, God, I don't know, I, I don't really understand why I'm going through this. God wants us to be open and honest with him. I, I don't know why that I'm having to go through this, but I trust your plan. I know you have a plan for my life. You know, we face an adversary in this life. 
Brother Eric preached recently about the devil has a plot, but God has a plan. God has a plan for your life. And the devil may try to come against you, but he has no authority. If you're a child of God, he has no authority. At the name of Jesus, he has to say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Give him praise. So they were in a quandary. They began to pray in one accord and they raised their voices. They were vocal in their prayer. And they shared their heart with Jesus in prayer. And when they had got done, what did they pray for? The Bible says they, they prayed for boldness that, that they could go forth and share the word. You know, there was just 5,000 that were just recently added to church here. That's not counting on the day of Pentecost. So the church was growing. You know, I heard this week that there was a revival spreading in California. And I would say California, they need a revival. Kentucky needs a revival. Russell County needs a revival. Bernard Ridge could use a revival. So God was working in them and through them. They prayed in unity. We pray to a living God that hears and answers prayer. What benefit would it be for me to pray to that chair right there? That chair can do nothing for me. We pray to a living God that hears and he can answer our prayers. I'm glad we don't have to pray to a block of wood or some statue or something. I'm glad we can pray to a living God. Prayer is supposed to be one of the most exciting aspects of our life. It has power to, to, to change lives. To, it has power to change our circumstances. It gives us peace knowing that we, we serve a God that created all of this, made everything that was made, yet he knows our name, he knows the very number of hairs we got on our head, and some of us, it don't take long for that. That's not a big deal for him. But he knows all about us. But he wants us to have that open line of communication with him. So they, they, they plead for boldness to speak the word. God has the power to change the course of nations. God has the power to change the course of America. God has the power working through us to win the world for Christ. And that's what he has given us the task of doing is sharing the good news of the word. But they wanted this boldness not for their own accolades. They wanted this boldness to speak the word to bring honor and glory to God. They didn't ask for miracles to, that they would be able to do with their own power. They wanted God to work through them. They wanted to be a, a willing vessel, a conduit of God's mercy and grace to others. And when they had finished praying place was shaken, just to reaffirm that God heard their prayer, he was working already, he gave them an earthquake as a unique symbol of his presence, there was a shaking going on, the presence of the Holy Spirit was, was manifested even in the walls of that building. The place where they were, the place where they were, where they were praying, was shaken. But God's word was not shaken. God shook the place to, just to reaffirm them. You know, when we pray, and we're praying with all earnestness, we're, we're pouring our heart out to God. He will give us 
a sign of confirmation that he hears our voice. He will give you confirmation on that. We may not see the results just when we want them in our time frame, but God, God will give us confirmation that he's hearing and now. So God took the place just to reaffirm their faith and, and that they would be sent. But Scripture tells us that there's going to be another Jacob soon. There is going to be another Jacob. Scripture tells us that the world as we know it now will be shaken. But some things will never be shaken. The church may be shaken through the power of the Holy Ghost. We've seen some powerful services in here, and I'm not sure those walls weren't, weren't vibrating a little bit, weren't shaking. But the church will stand. Because it has a solid foundation. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is going to stand. It will never be shaken. God's word will not be shaken. Mark chapter 13, he said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall not pass away. First Peter for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory, oh man, of fire grass, the grass withers and flower fadeth, but the word of God endureth forever. So the God's word will never be shaken. God's word will stand for, for an eternity. You know, the message cried out in the wilderness was meant to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. People have tried, tried to discredit this word. Rulers have ordered it burned. When it was copied, it was on material that would perish. But it was recopied even before the printing presses were. So God's word is going to stand. Peter makes a beautiful connection showing that the enduring word of Isaiah's prophecy is the same word of the gospel that is preached today and brings salvation. The word of God is going to stand forever. It will never be shaken. God's promises will never be shaken. This Bible is full of promises, and they will never be shaken. Promises that was made many thousands of years ago, but they stand firm today. They're still true today. 1 Corinthians, in Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, he said every word, every promise of God is yes and amen to the, to the glory of God by us. The Bible promised us, he said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. In John chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Just what they were singing about here a few minutes ago. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. The Bible tells us a promise. He said, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible tells us one of the promises. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The devil will throw everything he has at us, and he uses people. But no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. That's the promise of God. That will never be shaken. What shall separate us from the love of God? Shall distress, persecution, peril. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. Don't have nothing to fear but fear itself. So God's promise is never going to be shaken. Jesus said, In the world you shall have peace. 
because he said, I have overcome the world. And he, he gives us this inner peace that we have today. Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. He took the sting of death away. The promises of God can, can never be shaken, but will stand for, for an eternity. God's power will never be shaken. It is resurrection power found in the life of Jesus. It is power to save even the lowest of sinners. It's a power of creation. The power is never going to be shaken. It's power to, to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind, make the lame to walk again, raise the dead. It is power to, to part a raging sea and let his children walk across on dry land. It's power to close the mouths of hungry lions. Let Daniel use them for a pillar. It's power to protect three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace when it was heated seven times hotter than it normally was. And how did they do that? Because there was a fourth man walking in there with him, and the image of him was like the Son of Man. That's the power of God. It's power to shake the prison walls when Paul and Silas were in jail. And they began at midnight to sing praises and worship. And there was an earthquake, there was a shaking, and the shackles fell off of them, and the prison doors came open. That's the power that we're talking about, the power of God that can never be shaken. I'll tell you something else that can never be shaken. It's God's promise. The prophecy is contained in this word. Jesus said, I will go, must go away, but I will send you Comforter. Jesus' death was prophesied many years before, and he was he came into this world because God knew that we needed a savior. We needed a ransom for our sin. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he was promised he would come. And you look at the prophecies in the Bible. Most of them has been fulfilled. There's one one that's remaining. When he ascended into heaven in Acts chapter 1, the angel of the Lord told him, he said, you men of Galilee, he said, why stand here gazing up in heaven as he ascended up? He said, this same Jesus will come again in like manner. 1 Thessalonians said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So he's coming back with the voice of an archangel to announce that, with the sound of a trumpet. And I believe there will be a shaking that day. Jesus is coming again. Many people have grown complacent about this prophecy of Jesus coming back. I've heard it all my life. And I'm sure you have too. But wait a minute now. God's timetable is not the same as ours. Jesus is coming back. You look at the prophecy things that happened in the Bible. He told Noah to build an ark. And it hadn't rained to mount anything there. It was watered mostly from the dew and things. But God repented that he made man because he saw how evil the land was. And he repented. And can't you just imagine Noah over here now hammering and sawing and tearing on and people passing by? Noah, what in the world are you doing? He said, I'm building a boat. Can't you imagine the tongues are wagging? And it was probably on Facebook and all of that, you know. 120 years from the time he, he got the word till he gathered all the animals 
and loaded in the menorah. But God said he was going to destroy mankind with the flood. It took 120 years, but it happened. So many problems. Jesus said, he's talking about the beauty of the temple. And he said, soon not, not one rock is going to stand upon another. Forty years later, the Romans come in and destroy that temple. So all these prophecies are going to happen. We don't know when. We don't know the exact time. So what is what is what is God waiting on? As we think, we, we know He's coming back. And you look at the world and you say, "How can it stand much longer?" So, so what is God waiting on? I tell you, I'm glad you asked. Because I'm fixing to tell you. Now you listen to the bald head preacher. God is waiting on people to come to him. He's given you ample opportunity to turn to the Lord. That is the only thing that's keeping Jesus from returning today. He's waiting on people to come to him. The scripture bears that out. In 1 Peter 3, 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is patient with America. Many have the mindset that I got by with my sin yesterday. I got by with my sin today. I'll get by with my sin tomorrow. Well, we have no promise of tomorrow. Jeremiah said in chapter 8, he said, Summer is ended, the harvest is past, and we are all not saved. Hebrews 12 said there's going to be another shaking. God shook the earth at Mount Sinai. He told Moses, he said, you get the children of Israel. They were at the base of Mount Sinai. And he said, three days. He said, you have to wash yourself. You have to prepare yourself. And in three days, I will appear. And he came in a, a cloud of smoke. And that Mount Sinai quaked. It shook. So he told him, he said, get ready. Because I'm coming. Three days later, he did. And God has told us, Jesus said, I'm coming back over 2,000 years ago. And he could come today. He could come tomorrow. One day this earth's going to pass away and, and, and a new day begins. I was laying there in the bed. And like I say, my, my heart has been, has been heavy with things are going on and I was laying there I was sitting at my desk at, at midnight this morning last night whatever you want to call it and God just dropped in my spirit the parable of the ten virgins five wise and, and five foolish I was thinking about that, how five were wise, and they took oil for their lamps, and they were ready when the bridegroom cometh. And five were foolish. They didn't, they didn't take any oil for their lamps. And, and they were left out of the marriage supper with the lamb. And if I told you, if I had the gift of prophecy, and if I told you that Jesus was coming back this afternoon at 548 Central Daylight Time, if I told you that at 548 this afternoon that that trumpet was going to sound, there would be a voice of an archangel. 
in, in the eastern sky. And you could see the graves begin to, to burst forth and, and give up their dead. What would you do differently? What would you what would you do to make preparations for for that time if you knew that at five forty eight this afternoon he, he's coming back for his church? Would you do anything different? If there's things in your life that might be a hindrance if Jesus came back this afternoon. We don't know what time. It, it could happen because if you look over at Jesus, we know he's seated at the right hand of God. And God could look over. Even Jesus didn't know the exact time. But he could look over at him and Say, son, enough is enough. Go bring my children home. And we don't want to be like the five foolish virgins that, that wasn't prepared. They hadn't made their preparation. They hadn't taken extra oil in their lamp. We want to make sure that there's nothing in our heart that would keep us from spending eternity God laid this over my heart this morning. And I, I was I was burdened. I don't should tell you, I shed some tears this morning. Because I see the world around us, how things are going and the shape our nation's in. And we need that boldness that these guys prayed for that that we can speak the word. It, it's not popular. A, a, a feel-good sermon is so much easier to, to preach, but it, it's not what God wanted me to say this morning. He dropped this in my spirit. And I've got to, I've got to obey God rather than, than men. And I challenge you this morning. If there's anything in your life that that you need to fix, if Jesus would come back and that would be, you would be held accountable for that. Then God is offering us an opportunity this morning. To make amends, to make things, to make things right. Sister Jeannie, would you all come back to the music? And that's why I say I was, I'm burdened. Because this world is going to come to an end. And it's going to be sooner than later, I believe. But I don't know that. You don't know that. But I do know that there's going to be a shaking, but there's some things that, that won't be shaken. That's God's word, his promises, his power, and his prophecy. Shaken in the biblical definition means things that are imperfect or sinful will be removed. There will be no sin in heaven. The Bible tells us to live holy lives because he is holy. The one we serve is, is holy. And he set a pattern for us to pattern our lives after So I want to come to him with clean hands and a clean heart and hear him say, well done.
stood and faced the servant. That is the, wouldn't it be terrible to, the worst thing in the world you could hear would be, after you lived a long, full life, to hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. But we can be assured that we can hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because that's one of the promises that he made us. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can have a no-so salvation. We don't have to wonder about it. We can have a no-so salvation. Pray with me. Father God, Lord, we we come this morning with a heavy heart. Heavy because of our our nation and then our friends. Some are not probably not ready to meet you. So God, you've given us this opportunity. We can know. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? Spiritual preparation cannot be bought or borrowed at the last minute. Like the food, five foolish virgins at midnight, an hour when they thought least, Jesus came. I'd like to ever ever head bowed and eye closed this morning. And if you would just be honest.